And I said, you know, I did, um, you know, work for, uh, I went to the mirror and all this. So I said, Maxwell, he said, yeah, he was a, he was a bugger. He said, what do you mean he's a bugger? He said, oh, we were in the, in the, in, in, we served together. And, um, and I said, hello. And then we started this conversation. And then, you know, what he actually, I said to him, what, what, what was he like? He said, and he said, well, he liked killing Germans. He did like it. And of course he shot the mayor. Do you know this story? No. Mm. What happened was that Maxwell, his platoon crossed the Rhine into Germany. <laughs> And they came to a small town, I think this is right, and they, they hoisted white flags, so they were going to surrender. Yeah. Maxwell's platoon walked into the town, but there were German snipers in the rooftops. Okay. And they killed one or two of Maxwell's platoon. And Maxwell lined up the elders of the town in the town square, including the mayor, and shot the mayor. Through the forehead, and possibly one or two others, but I'm not sure, as reprisal. Jesus. And he was c quite haunted by this, I think, in later life, because he said to Ian more than once. And when Joe Haynes wrote his biography I've got of, there somewhere. and Joe's book yeah and I mean and I think yeah Joe regrets writing it because you know he had to write it but it wasn't a great book no but actually <laughs> worry, yeah, what's but interesting is he insists Joe insisted on putting the story about, of shooting the mayor into the book and it was the one thing that he argued with Maxwell about because Maxwell said no I'm going to be done for war crimes and Joe said, no, no, it's wartime, and blah, 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 blah. So I think, but, you know, Maxwell knew by then that his parents had been wiped out. Yeah. I mean, you know, my God, it's, it's wartime, you know, I mean, it's not pussyfooting around. No, 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 and, you know, uh, no, I, I, I mean, he was a guy that I somehow knew. You know, the village that I was brought up in, you know, every, anybody of my father's age, they'd all been in the war. And so, when you became about thirteen or fourteen, and you, and you sat around a table with these guys, you know, they all, two or three of them have been sort of like you know, dropped at Arnhem, yeah. done this, done that, done the other, and you think to yourself, all of a sudden, you're, these guys have sort of killed people, yeah. you know, and they've been there, and they've been, you know, because they, they were a little different. Because I was, cause my father was in Arctic convoys during the war, and the village I came from in Hampshire was full of uh, old ser ex-service people. Yeah. Right, Salisbury, this yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. odd little dogleg of Hampshire goes between the bottom of Wiltshire and the top of Dorset, and and of course I didn't really think about it at the time. The PQ convoys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were Jesus. all damaged people. Oh. Yeah, they would sort of like there was just something. Yeah. They were kind of a bit dead behind the eyes, frankly. Well, you know, you talk about PTSD now, and all that. Well, of course, you know, these guys came back, um, whether, you know, my father was in the Navy, mm. and, it, it, and they ended up in the Far East, and they picked up all these lads from Singapore and to, to bring the on aircraft carrier, and brought them back, you know. And they had a burial day, and, you know, it... it and. and you know, I don't know how you get over that. I don't know. You know? Well, and, I don't, and of course, yeah, there was no such thing as post-traumatic stress disorder. No, then. no, nobody you was know, talking about it. These people, they just bloody bottled it up. They came back, and you wondered why just occasionally some people were a bit strange. But actually, geez, a guy I worked with in my, when I started my apprenticeship, he'd been in Vienna and this, that and the other and all that stuff. And... The Russians did this and so and so, and he was a bit strange, and he was bloody strange, mm. you know. But mm. you can sort of understand it, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. But um, no, right. the, so we 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 did get the um, um, money across, and for, but then of course we were accused of stolen goods. Yeah. So we then spent three years, or maybe even longer, trying to prove that we did actually 
And of course, then you know, should have come by, should have been there. Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of uh, So that yeah. was a difficult end yeah. to it all. Yeah. But there was something, you're absolutely right, there was something that had gone at that period, that, that when, uh, probably before we left. But, you know, I think he actually sort of missed. I think you're surrounded by publishers and and politicians and bankers and there was something I think he quite liked about the fact that we were worried about mm. winning an order and we'd celebrate down the pub when we won and then you know we'd be pissed off if we lost and he was part of that and I think somehow or other there was something that he missed about the camaraderie yeah, competition sure. yeah. rather than this and then he got into the world in a way that he hated all these brackets, establishment figures, you know, Goldman Sachs and Christ knows what else, and Sir Michael Richardson wandering around, yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah, those yeah, sorts yeah, of guys that, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, all got away with stuff. Perhaps you know, but and of course, yeah, you know, I think it was pretty set in, the, in 88 when he bought Macmillan and the Airlines yeah. Guide, yeah. and he paid far too much. And he yeah. was, from that moment on, he was, you know, running to stand still, as it yeah. were. So. Yeah, so we, and we, had, we were sold primarily to fund that sort of acquisition trail. Yeah. So he had got 260 odd million um, for us from a range of venture capitalists and things. Um, and, um, and that money was, was, was spent on, you know, Macmillan and AIG and, and, and all that, which were, which AIG was a license to absolutely print money. Uh, but yeah. the thing with, with it, they paid at the top, and this is the thing, of course it was going to be revolutionised by technology. Mm. Now, it wasn't until the late 90s, um, but it was an un, unusual Bob acquisition. Mm. Um, because actually when he bought from Reed, he bought the Mirror and he bought BPC or got BPC, they were cash poor yeah. but asset rich. Yeah. And so he had owned, well we, 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 we ended up selling land for bloody Tesco's and Crossroads what else because we had so much land that went with these printing businesses and as they modernised you needed less land. And, mm -hmm. and Bob made a lot of money for yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, and look at the mirror, because the property of the mirror was, you know, worth as much as the paper or something. Well, more. I mean, he, when, he, when he bought, they bought four flats yeah. that, that, uh, that the mirror, uh, that Reed had somewhere. No, they didn't even know they had them. And we used to see how that. But, um, no, no, the mirror, I mean, it, I remember seeing in, in, the, in the Daily Mirror when he published the plans of what it was going to look like. Um, the new mirror, and now, of course, where it is now, it's nothing like, yeah. The place I worked yeah, in, yeah, yeah. the great Sainsbury's and all that stuff, and it looks yeah. great. It's what actually he planned, and it was bought for ninety million pounds or something, you know, which is lost in the roundings. Mm. Thank you very much. That's no, my pleasure. And if I can help any more, well, let me know. Yeah, I, I am my, I am going to New York on Sunday for a week, and then I'm back. Then I've got two youngest children. I've got half term, so I think we've got to go away. But so essentially, can I so anyway. can I give you a call when I'm back and, let, and we can fix up? I'll, f I'll, s and I'll get Peter yeah. sorted out so that when you're back, Fantastic. he'll be in line. That would be brilliant. Yeah, That'd and then the the great. only thing is, we just need uh, what I'm what I'll probably do is make up a picnic. And um, take it down for him and Margaret, and have some meal, a little, little bite to eat or something. Um, have a chat with him, bugger off, and then you take over, and then I'll come back. And is that all right for you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you yeah. sure? No, I mean, I, I think, I think, to be honest with you, I think there are two things really. Firstly, I like if it's worthwhile, mm. I'd like the story to be told well, and secondly, I think it'd be good for Peter. Great. I think he'd yeah, think he'd yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Oh, fantastic. And, and I think he would like it. And it, really? I think actually it's probably something that needs to be said. Yeah, and I mean, God knows, he's probably the last person who can say it. Yeah, 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 that's actually what, what, what yeah. I was thinking. And I don't, I haven't asked him. Mm. Um, I wanted 
to make sure yeah. you, you, you know, you were okay with that.